boy. Oh, now you are. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Why don't I go back to the <laughs> first slide? Um, cool. So this is my talk on social responsibility and Rad Studio. I'm talking about um, why we chose to go beyond the technical side of game development with Rad Studio. I am Megan, the creative director of Rad Magpie and the program director for Rad Studio. And I'm just going to blast through this slide a little bit because we already we already been here. Um, Rad Studio is Rad Magpie's incubator program for teams of college students pursuing game development careers. In Rad Studio, folks get together in teams and make a game together under Rad Magpie's direct supervision. And in this since incubators are typically, the goal is to get a group of folks together under the leadership of a seasoned individual who can then guide folks and everybody can kind of lift each other up and work towards their shared goals. Um, we wanted to take that a step further and talk about how to lift each other up in Rad Studio. And that led to a lot of really great, really important conversations in the program. Um, I think this initial goal of technical skill development alongside compassionate skill development fostered a unique duality in our program. This program applies the same weight to the importance of hard skills and soft skills on teams. It's, so soft skills are a little bit more emotional quote. <laughs> um, they are valuable for all jobs, all aspects of your life. Um, it's kind of your ability to communicate on teams, to listen to others and understand. Um, whereas hard skills are more technical, they are like, for example, game programming or game art using Maya as a program to build a 3D model and texture it. Those are like hard skills. Um, it's also been explained to me as um, hard skills are what get you hired and soft skills are what keep you there. So I'm going to enter my art brain and paint you a little metaphor here. <laughs> but um, game development is like a pool filled to the brim with hard skills and so deep that you can't see the bottom. There's this never ending list of hard skills that you can learn in game development. The more you work on games in these team-based environments, the more you absorb. So the more you actively participate in game development production cycles specifically, the more you learn. Rad Studio's base function is to put students through a short, high-pressure production cycle over the span of 10 weeks so that they can learn the importance of scoping projects appropriately above nearly all else. Um, but it also engages this practice make, makes perfect side of game development learning. Um, and the same practice makes perfect argument can be made for soft skills. Soft skills are often called soft because they are not technical at all. Um, they're subjective and blurry and unrefined. Um, oftentimes you're on your own to learn soft skills in this series of trial by fire um, social situations, which isn't exactly helpful if you haven't had the resources to build a strong foundation for yourself already. Um, so essentially, we wanted to see what would happen if we hosted regularly programmed classes that centered soft skills with themes of social responsibility at the core of Rad Studio alongside the, this hardcore development cycle. So the beauty of soft skills is that they apply in a wash over the rest of every aspect of your life, not just game development. So if you build a strong understanding of these concepts, you're going to inherently stand out from the competition for all the right reasons. So here I've outlined the topics of some of the classes that we taught this summer. We started with communication because we deem it critical to team function. It's really imperative that students understand concepts of communication um, from the different kind of leadership styles that they can employ to the different kinds of communication styles they can employ. Um, it was really important to us. We also had Eve Crevache come and teach a class on mental health in games. Eve is from a nonprofit called Take This. 
um, and they focus on mental health in games. We had a representation class where we discussed the dangers of a single story, if you're familiar with that TED Talk um, by Chimamanda Adichie, and how the tropes in our creations reflect back into the real world, and also just how existing in a space can compel more people like you to enter that space. Um, we had a leadership class taught by Dana she taught about how compassion and clear expectations can make you a stronger leader. Um, how the gremlins fear and shame can get in the way of good communication and how to identify a leadership style that doesn't work for you so that you can communicate that. We also finally taught a community and allyship class. Um, it was about how game development functions as a community and why you might want to be an ally or how you benefit from an ally or how to even be a better ally if you don't already know. All of these classes have an element of social responsibility. It's really important to us that our students are empowered to grow into strong communicators with an understanding of real compassionate leadership and healthy motivation who care about the communities around them and who put the put in the work to support the people around them. These qualities not only make excellent game developers, um, they make excellent allies, neighbors, and friends. So I believe that people harbor these qualities also just live happier, healthier lives, which is totally something I wanna see in game development. <laughs> I also just wanna take a second to kind of like point to our safe space policy at Rad Magpie, which applied to Rad Studio and also applies to this party. Um, I believe that this policy helped reinforce the boundaries for the soft skills learning within the program. It clearly defined these boundaries early on that affected the choices that people made about how to treat each other in this space. This, I believe, was an ultimately positive reinforcement of the social responsibility learning in this program. So let's talk about hard skills. To catch you up to speed, if you are not aware, um, mentors were one-time visitors from the games industry. Uh, Willie here actually was a mentor. Hello. <laughs> and Amila taught a workshop, which I'll touch on later, but I don't want you to feel like I'm not shouting you out right now, because I am. Um, <laughs> um, so mentors are one-time visitors from the games industry. We pulled from all corners of the industry so that our students would get valuable insight from an array of unique perspectives and coaches were Rad Magpie executives, um, specifically Dana and myself, who each paired with a team for the entire summer. We provided weekly guidance to our teams and connected them with the resources that they needed. Coaches function as an expert on the inside who doesn't ex exactly like do uh, literal game development on the team. We weren't, we didn't have our hands in the build. Um, we were more like product owners or executive producers in this situation. Coaches and mentors fulfill a part of the need of the teams to grow as game developers and to grow their hard skills within this incubator. Having somebody present who understands the game development process on a professional level, who can sort of sit up in the crow's nest of the pirate ship and warn the teams of specific red flags or impediments on the horizon, helped make it possible for teams to develop as much content as they did in such a short amount of time. And these are the workshops that I was talking about. These also lent themselves to reinforcing this hard skill learning within the program. They're different from classes in which they're uh, an hour, so they're shorter, and they teach these game development specific skill sets. Um, Amila, hello. Amila taught the postmortem process um, workshop, and it was great. And the students learned a lot. Um, so moving right along. Um, so why social responsibility? Ultimately, folks come to our program looking for their own path to success in an industry that is full of crunch culture, exploitation, and lack of representation. It's not an easy endeavor, and we have to be honest about that. 
as teachers, as mentors, and as coaches, um, we have had to combine all of these concepts throughout the program in a way that people can internalize for their future. Social responsibility is an ethical framework, and it suggests that an individual has an obligation to act for the benefit of society at large. For some, the games industry is just this tiny shrouded corner of the world, but I really believe that the choices that we make here, even on small student teams, have it, this big butterfly effect into the rest of the world in ways that we can only barely comprehend. So in Rad Studio, we do not just focus on hard skills and we do not just focus on soft skills um, because for an underrepresented creator to survive and thrive in this industry, it takes a mix of hard skills and soft skills, a sense of social responsibility, some rock solid healthy coping mechanisms and no small amount of courage. Um, so that's why we move beyond the island of technical game development in our program, um, because the technical side of things is only the first step. Thanks. Um, if you like this talk, please donate. That's my shameless plug with the little candle hand. <laughs> um, does anybody have any questions? I'm clapping for you. Thank, Thank you. you, Megan.